Okay, Doc. Uh, no spotlights tonight, right? You want to get into the next topic? Well, I think we're going to use the spotlight feature to 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 uh, deliver some a somber eulogy. No, I call it that. We can call it a spotlight because he deserves a spotlight. That's right. He's you know? damn right. So uh, what Doc's talking about is obviously we're recording this the night, um, you know, of the news that Tracy Smothers passed away from cancer. We have known for a while that Casey, uh, that Tracy was battling with cancer and it had uh, taken its toll on him. And recently it had come back and come back pretty strong. I had actually uh, messaged Tracy last week. I didn't mention this to you or Harper, but I just said, hey. Tracy, hang in there. You know, all the BTT listeners are um, keeping you in their thoughts and they want to make sure you you know that. And I just said, you know, hang in there, Tracy. And he responded and he said, thank you. Uh, that was all he said. And that was the last correspondence that he and I had. But I wanted to say one other thing about Tracy before, before I throw it to Doc. Uh, the thing about Tracy, and we've lost a lot of legends this year. We've lost Kamala. We've lost Bullet Bob. Uh, wrestling Animal. Too, even died in animal we've lost a lot of legends this year but one thing i'll say want to say though that makes tracy's passing a little different to me is tracy uh, i knew him and i got to know him because of this show and because of harper and because of wildcat and tracy was very giving coming on this show two different occasions and basically spending about three hours of time with us and we got to ask, we got to know Tracy through this show. And I, I, you know, I exchanged texts with him from time to time. And and he was just a really good dude. And he was always really super nice. Even like even at X-Rated last year, I remember, you know, seeing him in his condition and how he was walking. And he, he hadn't had cancer yet. He was, but um, I made, made reference to Harper because I hadn't seen Tracy in so long in person. I was like, man, I was like, Tracy's walking with a cane. He's like, yeah, man, you know, he's all messed up, but he'll get in that ring. He'll still bump. And he did. And the thing about Tracy, again, was we actually got to know Tracy and we had him on the show and he told New Jack stories and him and Bobby were on the show with me and they told Ron Wright stories. And we got to ask him about all of the things we wanted to pretty much ask him about in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. And Tracy was just as nice as he could be and given and he was a pleasure to talk to. And uh, that's what I wonder. That's what I want. The one last thing I want to say when I talked to Tracy last year at Wildcat and we weren't recording, I was just speaking to him. Uh, I was like, you know, Tracy, uh, thank you for the previous years when he had first came on the show. I said, thank, thank you for coming on BTT. We appreciate it. You know, thank you very much. He goes, oh, no, Mike, you know, Smoky Mount was so much fun and I had such a blast and, you know, Corny was so good to us back then and, and, and with it. And he talked about, you know, Ricky and Robert. He was like, man, we had so much fun. And um, and then um, I said, man, I said, Tracy, you know, I was like, you know, what about Candido? You got any good Candido stories? And Tracy, um, he like gasped and he almost, he started to like tear up. He's like, I miss that dude so much. He's like, Chris was so nice. He was such a good man. And he's like. I don't. I, he really couldn't talk about it because he just was. He was getting choked up thinking about his friend, but he just wanted to go on to say. He's like, I really like that y'all do that Smoky Mountain show, and and he's like, thank you. He's like, it's cool that y'all put a spotlight and talk about all of us, and and um, he just was very very thankful, and he wanted to say thanks. He's like, tell all the fans, everybody who listens, you know, thank you very much. He was just very very thankful for uh you know just not just the show but like all of the fans he still had he he told me that that night he was like i just i'm just thankful for all the fans i ever had and he was just as nice as he can be he took pictures with me i think he took pictures with sparks um adam price btt hall of famer sparks um and basically everybody there i i want to say all the members of the btc army that went to wildcat x radio he took pictures with and uh just just a wonderful man and um I said this a couple of weeks ago related to cancer. You know, we can all agree, disagree on many things in this world, whether it's religions or politics in this crazy world we live in. But one thing we'll all unite on is fuck cancer. And I feel that way now. I lost my dad to cancer. It's a bullshit disease. I hate it. Fuck it. it I, this earth will be a better place the day they can get rid of cancer and eradicate it. I don't know if I'll ever see that, but. 
R.I.P. Tracy Smothers. We love you and and thank you for um thank you for the memories. Um, sorry I rambled, Doc. Go ahead. Well, and <clears throat> I spent the afternoon thinking, you know, how much time did smoke did Tracy Smothers entertain us in Smoky Mountain? And <clears throat> I think way back, I mean way back in this show. I think we did a top five most underrated wrestlers of all time, and Tracy was on several of our lists. <clears throat> but the one line that kept coming back to me, and <clears throat> sorry about that, the one line that kept coming back to me is the line that Harper threw at us in Smokey, which was, he's their Hulk Hogan. And when you watched him cut those promos and he's talking there, I mean, obviously he's saying things that those people couldn't say, but it's close. He's doing, he's speaking for them and to them. And just, you saw the talent in Smoky Mountain that never got tapped on the bigger stage. And that's a crime. Don't you think? It's a crime because he was so talented. I mean, and he was a worker. Like he could wrestle and work, but he could work a crowd. I mean, you said that at a, even at X rated, but he knew how to manipulate a, a large group of people. He he could work a crowd. He was a great great heel. He was just as good of a heel as he was babyface, and it it is a shame he never got the shine that you he deserved on a bigger stage and look I, I know you know he was in wcw um you know with steve armstrong and they were the tag team and i and i know um i guess you know you could argue ecw's platform that they had at that point in time but i mean i, I know tracy was i know i know he had other platforms but y you know what i'm saying where he never yeah. made the big money and and whatnot so it, it it's it's sad, man. It really is. And again, man, I mean, you know, the other thing that it made me think of is like, how many of those guys have we said, have we heard not just, and, and this ain't about us. I mean, I, I ain't playing heel here at all, but how many of those guys have we brushed up against in some form or fashion that are like, have either said, thank you for doing this show or that was one of the most fun times I ever had. Oh yeah. Bobby and says it. Bobby Blaze would say it all the time. Bob Armstrong Tracy said, said it. it. Yeah, yep. Yep. Sure did. Morton, I've heard Morton say it. Um uh Scott Armstrong on Twitter. He's never been on the show, but Scott, you talked about how much fun he had in Smokey doing the Dixie Dynamite gimmick and then, you know, his own gimmick as well. And, and I mean, I know Scott wasn't there the, the entire time. Tracy was almost there the entire time. He came in very early. Um, but, oh. yeah, Scott said it, how, how much he enjoyed it. But when you've got legends in the sport talking about how what that promotion meant, that's a testament right there to to what they were trying to do. And guess what? I mean, Tracy was there for just about the whole run. He got there a little bit late, and he was a prominent member the whole way through. And, I mean, you think about some of those lines, if we can't get along, then we got to get it on. Yeah. And, you know, like a duck on a June bug. and um, Ages 8 to 80, blind, crippled, and crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, what was the, oh, I ain't going nor uh, east and west, I'm going north and south. Yeah. And it was just yeah. all those, you know, we're going to go out there and fight. And, and he had that whole, you know, he had that whole Southern thing of, I'm going to pull out the chair for grandma. I'm going to go whoop your ass later tonight. And then I'm going to fuck you, girl. And he had that <laughs> smile that worked for all of it because he was working the crowd. He was a great worker. Um, and then and then him being in the FBI in when in, in ECW was equally ridiculous. And he was Shaquille Ali in USWA. Freddie Joe Floyd. No, I'm just kidding. Um that was, and see, 
Yeah, but uh, I mean, you can't you can't fault that. How many? No, no, I, I I'm laughing when I say that because I mean, look, at the end of the day, he had a he had to support himself, and you do you you do the job. Pin me, pay me. I mean, you can't blame him for that. He was he was just doing his job. You I'll know. Tell you another thing. He gave one of the craziest, this side of Teddy Hart, craziest uh, podcast interviews I've ever heard back when Terry Garvin Sims did a podcast. He basically got interviewed while he was at his job delivering pizzas, and he kept getting disconnected, (laughs) and he kept going in the store for more pizzas, and he kept having to go up to a house. And but he stayed on the damn interview for over an hour. It was and it was awesome. That I'm glad you brought that up. We we've never talked about that on his show. He was on um I think it's called World Wrestling Domination. Was Terry Garvin Sims or R.I.P. Terry Garvin? I mean, look, yeah, there's yeah, we, another we one. Talked about him. Um, uh, yeah. So Tracy was at his job. He's on the phone. He's doing his hour and a half long podcast with Terry, and. I remember at one point he said something like, and something was going on at work, and I think Terry Terry's like, "Hey, everything all right?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck them if they fire me. Let them try to fire me. They ain't gonna fire me." Like he's going off, and he, he was at the shoot job. It was the greatest thing. Uh, Terry Garvin Sims had some some tremendous podcasts, including the one with Robert Fuller that he that they allowed us to re air here, but. Yeah, I remember that, and uh, I don't know if it's still available or out there, but it was hilarious, and Tracy was hilarious. But, you know, Tracy's uh, one of a kind, man. He was, again, I mean, you ha- you heard when he was on the show with, with us, he, he was... Well, and here's he was, another, but here's another thing. So, you know, as a hustler, as a worker, as an old school guy who had to, had to eke out a living, you would never think a guy like him would be involved with the insane clown posse, but he had nothing. He worked with the, the juggalo thing and I'm not, you know, it's not my thing, but I I ain't hate on it. He worked with them for years and, and put them over. I mean, he was a worker. No other way to say it. He, 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 Tracy could captivate an audience, man. I mean, he was just that damn good. So I'm looking on his Wikipedia page, and I don't agree with this. So I always like to go down to the bottom where they have the championships and accomplishments piece. And it says here that for Pro Wrestling Illustrated, they ranked him 371 of the 500 best singles wrestlers during the PWI years. Now, I ain't Uh, going to sit here and say there's 370 better wrestlers than him. I ain't going to say there's... You know he's in the top ten, but yeah, it's all subjective. I mean, the, it's a, the PWI is a work anyway. So what does that mean? But he was the. Uh, be- it says here he was the beat the champ in Smoky Mountain three times, the uh-huh. heavyweight champion twice, the tag team champion once. And yeah, so- he held all the titles. And let me remind you, um, he had one of the most memorable matches in that promotion is that the chain, the chain match the chain match yep. that was a bluegrass brawl so clever and well done and just we had heel heat for burning a rebel flag no oh yeah i mean you can go back to the when dirty white boy and and Ron Wright denounced their Southern heritage, and they burned the Rebel flag in the middle of the ring. I mean, they torched it. I ain't mean they lit a corner. They torched it in the middle of the ring, and and man, they had him handcuffed and they beat on him while he was handcuffed to the rope. But that feud ended up with them in a chain match at Bluegrass Brawl '93, I believe it was. And I don't know if I'm getting that year right, but anyway, long story short. One of the best matches you'll ever see. One of the best chain matches you'll ever see. Yeah, because those can be real boring if you don't do it right. And they did it right. I mean, they did it right. They did it right. It was tremendous. And I, tremendous. you know what though, my, you know, we've we've seen Tracy bleed. We've seen him get mad and, and apologize to Bob Caudle because he was stumbling because he was mad in a promo. We saw lots of really re- we. I mean, we saw just about everything. Um, the thing that still sticks in my mind, and it's kind of my lasting, you know, my forever image, I think, of Tracy 
was that first promo on his way in where he's sitting on the back porch swinging and they show him and he's out there driving the boat with his shirt off and he's just a good old Southern boy. Boy, they did that video package as good as it can be done for that. That's knowing your audience. He's out there on the boat and he's going fishing and they shooting at his hair's flapping in the wind. Corny knew how to present him. He knew how to present him in that area, and those fans ate him up and loved every minute of it. So, it's a sad... And here's the... God damn it, here's the other thing. 58 fucking years old. That's That's not... first thing, yeah. That's not old, Mike. No, that's way too close to where we're at right now. Well, I didn't want to say it because it's not about us, but Jesus Christ, it's, it's... I mean, 58 is, you're supposed to have, like, years ahead of you that are, are not just crapping yourself, and that, that that's the shitty part. It ain't like he lived to be 85 years old. He got cut off early. Well, okay, so and you're right. It's not about us, but I wasn't trying to make it about us. I was just trying to point out that we're at an age where we look at that and we go, that's not that old. And everybody can agree to that. And I mean, it's one thing, you know, to lose Kamala at the age he was and bullet Bob, bullet Bob lived a blessed life. I mean, you know, but, and I'm not saying that I was definitely not happy to see them go, but you look at Tracy, you look at Tracy, you you look at animal and it's like, man, come on. That's not right. So it's not just Tracy, Animal, but I don't know. There's something weird, and, and it's it, you know, it's not that big a deal. But like, I think Animal was sixty. There's something about making it to sixty it, that's bullshit. But I mean, just fifty-eight. Come on, that's too young, man. Um, it, especially to what, a guy that was as nice as he was. It's just, it's very sad. Too so young. we're going to dedicate the rest of this show to to Tracy's the memory of Tracy. Um, you know, I, I have to believe that most of the people listening to this show are big fans of his just because they've been listening to this show this long. I got to tell you, Ben, um, Harper on text before, you know, he lost power today. We had a little, we have our little group text going that we were all, you know, that this one hurt. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, I don't want to talk about it. You were messaging me and I was like, we'll talk about it later. I, I don't, I don't want to talk about it right now. It, it it's different. Like, it's one thing to know. It's one thing. I never met Animal. So it's one thing when Animal passes and it hit us. Because it's like, man, this guy was so great. He was one of the legends we watched growing up. And then with Bullet Bob. I never got to meet Bullet Bob. I never got to talk to him. Kamala. I never got to meet him. Never got to talk to him. Loved him. Loved everything about him. Mr. Wrestling 2, same thing. When you... When one of the... And I'm going to call Tracy a superstar because he, he was to me. I mean, he, he, made, he was a national television star in WCW. He was a regional territory champion in Smoky Mountain. He made his hay and made his hayway, heyday. He did well in ECW. I'll leave it at that. Um, he won the tag not, titles there. We're not going to talk about WWF. But my point is, uh, we got to know him, you know, and that's what the difference is when you look at somebody like him versus some of the other legends we've lost this year. you like, when you get to know somebody, and that's what I thought. I was like, this man was so generous, didn't ask me for a dime, was willing to do the show, looked forward to doing it. When I asked him to come back a second time, yeah, Mike, just call me. Let me know what day you want to do it or what day you can do it. And I remember last year when I called him, I was like, hey, Tracy, can we do it on Tuesday? He's like, oh yeah, he just let's let's do it, man. It's hot as can be out here, summertime. Let's do it on uh, sitting AC, and we'll record that day. I said, all right, let's do it. Um, he had to remind me. He texted me back. He said, hey, you want to do it next week? Cause I, I, you know, I try to be mindful of people's time. I don't want to just like badger them. And when he said that, I was like, yeah, let's do it next week. And this was like a couple weeks after X rated last year. So um, it's just. Uh, we had to just take a minute when um we we heard the news. I was hoping when I first heard the news, I saw it on Twitter. I was like, I hope that's not real. And then when Hopper said it, I knew it was real because I knew he would have gotten it from a reliable source. So on that note, 
R.I.P. Tracy Smothers. Thank you for everything you did in wrestling. We appreciate it, and we thoroughly enjoyed covering your nearly four years in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Just say three years and seven months or so. Doc, any other thoughts? No, man, it's a tough one. You know, once again, we lose somebody too early, which is all too often the case in wrestling. Um, th- as you said, this one hits closer to home than most. 